despite being so accessible, there's a lot of myth about running. Some false facts, some misconception, and these don't only come from people who don't run, it's also coming from runners. And that would be all fun and game, but some of these myths actually have an impact on how much you will enjoy the sport of long distance running. So today what I want to do is demystify some of these myths. My name is Simon, welcome to my channel. I'm an ultra runner, but really I'm just a normal guy with a camera and really my goal with this channel is to show you my adventure so that you get inspired to get out there. But also now that I have more experience, I'm providing these tips video so that you can be successful on trail and enjoy them. And today what I want to do is discuss about common misconception when it comes to long distance running. And these are misconception or myth that are told by non-runners sometimes, but also some of them are common amongst runners. Obviously, every myth comes from something. There's always some truth behind it. So I'll try to be nuanced as much as possible. And I know in today's era where we want a 30 second clip that explain everything about life, but I really want to really study both both sides of the coin so that you can make your own judgment. And of course, I'm gonna say what I think about these myths, what I think is true and what I think is false, so that you have a clearer picture as to what long distance running really is. And that comes from someone who's raced 3,300 miles, so I do have experience when it comes to long distance and ultra distance running. The first one, which is one that really could impair you into getting to long distance running to begin with, which is you need to be extremely fit. You need to be a gifted athlete, a natural born athlete to do these races. It's crazy to run a hundred miles. And yes, to actually run a hundred miles is extremely difficult. And ultra running in general is difficult. There's, it's not easy to run 50K. So the part true here is that yes, it is difficult. Yes, you will need to train. Yes, you will need to be to some extent fit, but is it only for gifted athletes or top level athlete, elite runner? No, because the first thing is that it's always relative. And I think what is interesting about ultra running is that these races are much smaller. So when you go to a marathon like Chicago Marathon, if you're an average runner, you'll never see the pro runner. You're in a different corral, you're maybe 20 people behind them and you'll never see them all day long. So it's kind of removed, but when it comes to ultra running, you're gonna be with there, you're gonna be lined up with them. You can touch them if you want, although that's kind of creepy, so please don't, but they are very close. You will see them on the course, you will line up with them and you can compare how slow you are, but normal people do these races and you're a normal person. Well, no, you're very special. You're very special. I'm sorry, you're very special. But <laughs> but there's even normal people like me that do these races. Um, and it's something that is achievable. So 50K, half marathon, marathon, all of these distance, they're all difficult, but you can do it. There's a variety in the body type and level of fitness. Look, I hate when there's some elitists that are like, oh, you know, like, 50 miles is not a real ultra marathon or whatever like that's that's bull like this, this is so stupid but also kind of shaming people in body weight i think there's advantage to be slimmer and like i'm obviously slim so like lucky me but don't think that you need to to be like this to be a runner there's runners of all size everyone is welcome but what is common with everyone is mental toughness you will need to be strong mentally and that's a big message of this channel is that you can do it and I want to help you do it. So hopefully my tips are helpful for that, but you need to believe in yourself and I believe in you. And I'm sure you heard that by basically anyone you met that learned that you're a runner, which is, it's bad for your knees. You're going to have arthritis. You're going to have to have knee replacement. So that one is also a tricky one to go through. And I think I might even do a full movie about that eventually. Uh, it's not even clickbaity, but I think it's a debate that goes a little bit deeper than what you hear from both sides. Uh, typically, non-runner will say it's bad for your knees. Runners will say, well, no, there's this study that says that it's actually good for your knees. If you know the specific study, like, please let me know in the comment below. I would love to read that specific studies. What I have found is a little less clear than that. The question might be more, what do you mean by bad for your knees? Uh, I've had runner knees. I had tendonitis there. I had tendonitis in my Achilles. So injuries happen, but are we talking about arthritis in your knees? Well, that's where studies say it's probably not, but there's other types of knee problems. 
And when it comes to arthritis in the knee, well, that's also tricky because the studies that I've seen um, could be affected by what we call survival bias. And you know, people that tell you oh, it's bad for your knees, most of the time they're caring people that care about you and want what's best for you. So I think it comes from a good place, but the place of not necessarily having the information. But the gist of it is that, yes, running can lead to injuries. And that's the question is, what do you mean by bad for the knees? I've had knee problem in the sense of uh, inflammation, tendonitis, runner knee is a thing, but it's not arthritis. Studies seem to suggest that running is not associated to arthritis in the long run. Well, <laughs> that running is not associated to arthritis in the long run. Um, but that's even a conclusion that is very difficult and that's where if you have seen the specific studies that says it's so good for it, uh, you can leave in the description below because what I've seen is, is a little bit more vague than that. I mean, I, I've read PubMed a little bit on that and it's not as conclusive as some runners say that like, oh, it's so good for the knees. But there's something to be said that a lot of the problems that you have with knees or joint in general can be associated to not having the muscle to, to reinforce the joint. And that's something that if you run long distance, especially on course that you have a lot of downhills, you will feel it. At some point, you will have pain in your joint and your knees. And the reason for that, or one of the reasons for that, is that your muscles are struggling to absorb the shock. And now it's, it's, really, the, it's really the joint that is getting beaten up. So the, the argument for running being good for your joint is that by running consistently or by being physically active, you're building these muscles and it will protect your joints in general and your day-to-day -day life that will prevent long-term damage. And that's an argument that I actually strongly believe in. Is it demonstrated that that's more of an hypothesis kind of thing than a clear fact of life? But it's, it's gonna be difficult to demonstrate. So where I stand with that is that running is not gonna be bad for your knees, but you can definitely have injuries and a lot of people deny that, but yeah, running injuries are pretty common and you have to be careful with that. You have to rest properly, you have to do strengthening exercise, you have to stretch. Before we dive into the next one, please leave a thumbs up if you appreciate this video that is helping me a lot create this material to help you achieve your goal in ultra running. A big myth out there, a big misconception is that when you say running an ultra marathon, it's about running. And I think it's just a vocabulary thing maybe. When we say running an ultra marathon, what we really mean is traveling by foot and not taking the car. But the reality is, depending how you place the difference between running and jogging, well, it's closer to jogging anyway, but hey, I'm fine calling it running. But there's a lot of walking too. You're gonna walk the hills and that's totally okay. You're gonna walk towards the end of the race because you're very tired, but you still ran an ultra marathon. There's no expectation that you would only be running. It's just that it will include some running. And also beyond that, a lot of people think that the challenge here is running that distance and really the, the running or traveling by foot is a big challenge of course but there's so much more behind running an ultra marathon that meets the eyes it's yes physical but it's so mental also it's much more about mental toughness it's about taking care of your body it's about reaching a level where you have a certain rhythm and a, a sustainability that helps you going on for so long running is a cheap hobby you hear that a lot from people that don't run, and when you ask people that run, they say it's extremely expensive. So what's the truth here? And that one is kind of tricky, actually, I think, because there's some truth to saying it's a cheap hobby, and there's some truth to saying it's expensive. So the truth to it's a cheap hobby is first, if you just go run, really all you need is shoes. And you don't even need good shoes if you just go run for, for a short distance. I encourage having good shoes to prevent injuries. But it's a sport that is very accessible. It's more accessible than anything else. I mean, really, you just need shoes and you go. Also, a part of it that is true about running as a cheap hobby is that if you compare it to some other sport, I've done a few Ironman, which I know that's <laughs> running is cheap in comparison. Uh, just the sign-up fee for an Ironman is pretty high. And then you look at bikes, for example. I, I use a pretty cheap bike uh, because I'm not exactly rich. Um, but these bikes can go for 15 grand. That is expensive, you know? Um, the shoes you will use with your bike are more expensive than the shoes you would buy for running. And you have three sports to think about. But what is true about it's expensive to run? 
first there's a lot of expense that will be associated to that that will grow with the more you're running so the one that people mention all the time is running shoes um, I run a lot and I probably buy I want to say six to ten pair of shoes every year I should probably buy a little more than that it, it, it piles up it definitely piles up I always look for option that will be cheaper so I will find shoes that I really like as soon as they're on discount online I'm gonna buy three pairs because I know I will use them and I will go through them and I know these are shoes that I like and doing that I'm able to buy shoes that are usually 70 bucks each so when you think about it just the shoes themselves are quite a few hundred a year even if you're careful but beyond that there's a lot of gears when it comes to trail running and there's things that you can cheap out a little bit so the running shorts that I have and the shirt are pretty cheap uh, but they're doing the job but something like a watch I think it's important to have a good watch I will last for the full race a good headlamp is a little bit pricier than a cheap flashlight but it's definitely worth it because you don't want it to die during your run so all of these things are something that you will gradually buy hopefully not everything in one day or maybe you ask them as a gift for Christmas or, or your birthday but these things do pile up so the more serious you get into running the more expensive it will get and we're not even touching what is actually expensive for example for me that race a lot for this channel it's filming equipment it's gonna be um, registration fee it's gonna be travel it's gonna be lodging I'm trying as much as possible to camp or sleep in the car to avoid the cost of lodging but I still need to get there I still need to pay for that race so these costs are definitely piling up but yeah I mean you have to reserve part of your budget for that on the flip side what I would say is that when you compare to yeah almost any other hobby money wise you're gonna spend some money but you will most likely be healthier from that and there are some health benefit that it's difficult to put a price tag on something that you need to be careful about is that because we run so much we think that we can eat anything and that is not true you cannot outrun a bad diet you will need to fuel a lot more if you run 10 miles a day every day of the year than if you were just sitting down all the time but you can still eat too much and you can definitely eat unhealthy food that will have a negative impact on your health so it's good to watch your nutrition in general and very quickly at least for me I, I noticed very quickly is my appetite is way bigger than it used to be since I do long distance running and if I stop running for a while I'm still just as hungry and you have to be careful with these things because it's easy to eat too much it doesn't mean you have a free pass on unhealthy behavior when it comes to nutrition another common myth uh, that just kind of like eh, annoys me a little bit is that the longer the race the harder and now there's this new trend of doing 200 miler and yes I'm gonna do one because I'm tired of people saying that I should do a 200 miler but longer doesn't mean harder there's always a combination of Yes, the distance, but also elevation gain. How technical is it? How much time do you have to do that? If you're looking to place, how competitive is the field? So there's a lot more than the distance. And I will never qualify for Boston. Like, that's not going to happen. I'm very far from running a sub three hour marathon. But hey, doing a sub 2400 mile, no problem. Well, it's difficult, of course, <laughs> but, but I can do it. So sure the marathon is shorter but reaching that in a certain amount of time is where it gets tricky a little bit so don't think that the longer the race the more worthy you are that's that's just silly that that is absolutely ridiculous a 50k is a long distance don't listen to any one of these elitist uh, runners that's like oh the, the pure distance is that no <laughs> no and the perception from the outside, which I think is totally wrong, is that ultra running is very competitive, it's very intense, it's very, you know, that's your life now. It's also elitist and, you know, it's all about being stronger, better, hardcore. Um, from my experience, that's more true for marathon running that always want to trim a few seconds and for Ironman people. It, it's, you know let's be alpha I think there's definitely some people that are like that in ultra running and that's that's totally fine we welcome everyone but there's definitely a large portion of people that you will see in race that are really just there to have fun to grow themselves push their limit and be with others so they will help you they won't be judging you they will tell you good job 
you know, you do a 50k, they won't be like, oh, 50k, oh, I do that in my sleep. No, they'll like, that's a beautiful goal, that is amazing, let me know if you have any questions, I want to support you. And that's the vast majority. You do have bad apples, you do have people that are a little bit more toxic. Um, just ignore these people, focus on nice people, and just... <laughs> You don't have to deal with negativity and no, it is not hardcore and most people have a pretty normal outside life. They eat normal and everything. So it's not, you know, it's not going to consume your whole soul if you get into ultra and trail running. These are in my mind the biggest misconception, the biggest myth that you hear out there from non-runner and runner. But what do you think? Is there any other big myth that you've heard or do you even disagree with some of my conclusion as to what is truth and what is not? I think some of these are a little bit gray zone area, so I'd be curious to know what you think. Please leave in the comments below. And as always, thanks for watching. 